Good day guys. Alright, so in this video I want to talk about diffraction grating, um, which is a subtopic in the topic of physical physical optics. Alright, so let's get into it. First I have a picture right of a grating and a screen. Okay. Um, so then what I can do is just illuminate it with a monochromatic light of wavelength lambda. Okay. So as those uh, light rays um, reaches the grating, you know, it reaches those slits and then those slits become sources for light rays. So let's consider um, light rays coming from the first one. Okay. I'll have a right, right light ray there and it reaches this point. This point I'll call YN, Y being the distance from the middle here or the midpoint. And then because it forms a bright fringe at YN, it has to be interfering with light rays sourcing from other other slits, right? So let's talk about what if it interferes with the second slit, right? When we talk about interference, we always talk about the path difference. And because we know they form a bright fringe, we know that this path difference is going to be some integer or some multiple of lambda. Okay, so um, then I can just for now assume that it's going to be lambda, and why do I do that? Because I want to because this bright fringe doesn't only form from these two sources; they they form by all of the sources. So when we talk about all of the sources, then we have to consider all of them, right? So we have to talk about say if we add a third slit, we consider the third slit, then we have to talk about the um, path difference between the third and the second, right? And then we have to talk about the path difference between the third and the um, first as well, right? The good thing is that because the because the slit separation is fairly constant between them, so d and d, if this is lambda, then I know this is going also going to be lambda. What I'm left with is another lambda. So here I have two lambdas right so um, I can extend this again right to a fourth slip and what I'll just find is three lambdas okay so all of this is just a multiple integer of lambda again and again and again okay so which which makes sense because they form a bright fringe at y n okay all right so um What's the takeaway from this? They all form a bright fringe at YN, and we can work out an equation that relates all of that, right? So then I can say my d sine theta, theta being the angle between um, the horizontal and the light rays, so theta, simply going to be lambda for the first bright fringe, right? For the first order. So this is for the first order. Okay, I can generalize that. Generalize to have d sine theta equals to n lambda, and this n simply represent the order number. Order number. See, one of the things I want to emphasize at this, at this point is that the d is the slit separation. Slit separation which is the distance between the consecutive slits, okay? Because why is that important? Because next we're going to be looking at sl uh, line density or slit density, okay? So that's the equation that we have. Let's move on to line density or slit density. So what I want to do is I want you to look at the, um, the, the, the gray thing that we have now and the green boxes represent slits, right? Okay, I want you to count the number of slit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven slits. And we know that the slit separation between them, let's just label them uh, D1 for now. Okay. So now I want to ask how many slits can I fit, right? Um, if I lessen the slit separation, right? Well, what happens is this, I'll have more slits, I'll have 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With the smaller slit separation, if I, with the smaller slit separation, I'll have a higher number count of slits for the same length. So this is the same length. Okay. So if I call this slit density as n, right, and d is just well d, right. If I have a bigger d then I can squeeze in, I can put less number of slits. Okay. So you're going to convert that to maths. It, you know, it's just D equals to 1 over N. So number of slits per, per unit length. So N is just number of slits, slits per unit length. Then D is simply the slit separation. Alright, so that's just the relationship between D and N. Alright, so once we know these two equations, we can start working on questions. Alright, so here's a sample uh, question that I'm going to present you with the solution. And then you can carry that over to your own practices, maybe in tutorials or the past year questions. Okay, so um, let's read the question. A monochromatic light with a wavelength of 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters strikes a grating containing 10,000 slits per centimeters. Determine the angular positions of the second order bright line. Okay, so there's quite a lot of information. Let's just write that down. I have my wavelength to be 2.5 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. I have containing 10,000 slits per centimeter. So slits per unit length. I have my slit density or line density, which is 10,000 lines or slits, sorry, slits per unit centimeter. And I have my second order bright line. So small n equals to 2. What equations do I know? I know D equals to 1N, as we just discussed. And then I have D sine theta equals to N lambda. Okay. So I can combine these two equations to have sine theta over N equals to N lambda. Right. If I again rearrange that, I'll have sine theta equals to small n, lambda, big N. I can then have the angle or calculate the angle by taking the arc sine, which gives me then sine negative 1, n, lambda, big N. And substituting the values that we have, I'll have theta equals to sine negative 1. Okay. So I'll give me a moment. Okay, sine sine negative one, and so my small n is simply two. Then I'll multiply it with lambda, so that's two point five times ten to the power of negative seven. Then I'll multiply that again with um, ten thousand slits. Okay, so because this is in meters, I have to keep them consistent, right? I'll have to multiply by 10 power of um, negative 2 and power of negative 1. So the negative 1 comes from per centimeter and the negative 2 comes from centi. Okay. So what I'm left with is theta is approximately, well, not approximately, it's exactly 30 degrees. Okay. So that's the angular position of my second order bright line. So that is all from me today, or at least in this video. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.